In November of 2023, the Swell Pod took a 10 day journey across five states, traveling 3,580 miles with one challenge in mind. And that challenge was to interview 100 pleasantly rebellious humans to uncover deep truths about what it takes to create something that has never existed before, challenge the status quo, maybe even change the world. This is the Kiln Road Trip created and produced by The Swell Pod. In partnership with Kiln, Motera Camper Vans, and sponsored by Taurus. I'm Spencer McEwen. And I'm Josh Taylor. And together we're the co-hosts of The Swell Pod and your guides on the Kiln Road Trip. Follow along on the journey. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Follow The Swell Pod on social media and subscribe to your YouTube channel at, you guessed it, The Swell Pod. This is interview 15 of the Kiln Road Trip, and today we're at Kiln Salt Lake City talking with Earl Foote. Earl is the CEO of Nexus IT Consultants. Nexus IT is a worry-free, hyper-responsive approach to providing world-class IT support and solutions so leaders can focus on their business. We elevate our team, clients, and community to new heights with our award-winning support, vibrant workplace, lively culture, and community-minded initiatives. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We hope you enjoy. I am founder and CEO of Nexus IT. I actually started the business 25 years ago at the age of 23. Um, You said to, you know, say something a little bit uh, unusual about myself maybe. So I, you know, for a, uh, and this isn't that far out of the realm, but, you know, tech CEOs oftentimes were a little bit of renegades, you know, Mm. Um, a little bit unconventional. I would say uh, that probably fits me. I'm, I'm a... I play bass in a rock and roll band, um, yeah. you know, have the big beard. Right now you still, um, right now yeah, you Yeah, I play in a, in a grunge punk 90s kind of retro band. Yeah. Nice. Um, um, and, uh, you know, um, overall, I just kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit of an anarchist, you know. Um, I like to kind of peel back the layers of about everything and mm. uh, go deep and think about them, you know, um, uh, from different lenses and perspectives. And um, it serves me well in business, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun in life, but uh, sometimes my ideas are um, not super welcome, you know, in, in really conservative <laughs> crowds, you know. <laughs> you fit the t-shirt already. You fit the t- we, we do have a gift for you, which yeah. is a pleasantly rebellious t-shirt. There you go. We'll, we'll, That's amazing. It's in, we'll, we'll get one from you, from the van for you. But where, where did that come from then, that, that attitude, that mindset? You know, I, I think it was inherent, inherent yeah. you know, yeah. just um, I, I didn't grow up in that kind of environment. In yeah. fact, I grew up in a in a very like kind of disciplined conservative uh-huh. environment maybe that's where it came from because it was Twin maybe a little break. too much yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a little yeah. too restrictive or you know stifling um yeah. you know so i but now from the time i was um you know from the time i was an early teen i would say like um I started to kind of question the status quo you know um started to question the man you know and uh, yeah. be like <laughs> oh, wait a second i don't necessarily have to follow the narrative just the way you know everybody Right. says it's supposed to be right um and granted uh my path has been a little varied too because of that right i've probably caused myself some some undue pain and mm. you know harder journeys and challenges um because sometimes there are proven paths and i choose to take the path less traveled even though the proven path might be easier right so yeah mm, interesting so what is what has the, the path been just <clears throat> briefly leading up to what yeah you are doing? Yeah, so, um, you know, I guess quick backstory of the business, right? Um, uh, I was um, I was 23 years old. Uh, I was working full-time, taking a full-time load of college credits, 18 to 21 college credits. I was married and had a kid when I started the business. Um, typical Utah kind of thing at the, at the time. Um, and uh, decided to get into business, you know, uh, with all that on top. Um, uh, certainly, uh, first off had no business being in business. I was, uh, <laughs> I, I was kind of an artist, you know, went into architecture, switched my major into, into structural engineering into mm. civil engineering, um, because of the job I'd landed mm. and, um, uh, and I, you know, I was working doing that, didn't really love it. And that's where I switched into it um, you know, into the IT engineering side <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, so like my brother and I started this business, I was 23, he was 25, 
candidly, we had no idea what we were doing. Like we didn't know the first thing about business. We just had a few clients that wanted us to freelance. Right. And so, um, uh, you know, we started there, started with some e-commerce sort of properties, um, and just tried a lot of different ideas, you know, had a lot of different hypotheses, you know, in those early years, tried some different things. Um, I was a bit of a audiophile because of my music, you know, music, uh, audio and video actually. So, um, we, for a long time in our early years, um, as an early stage company, we built turnkey audio video production systems mm. before you could buy something off the shelf, you know? Um, we'd build these really, you know, tweaked out, um, PCs, um, and we would sell them to, you know, AV production studios around the country. Sometimes we'd actually fly out and like do their installs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, at some point, um, the, you, you could go and buy a computer off the shelf basically, you know, and, and put a packaged piece of software on it and you were good to go. Right. And so that really wasn't a market anymore. Um, <clears throat> And it was about that time we really made our, our full pivot. You know, we assessed our, our best capabilities and what was, you know, what had the most market traction for us. This was, uh, 2004, um, about that time we, uh, uh and so we pivoted, you know, directly into, um, business to business services, actually rebranded the, the original brand of the company was PC Nirvana. Mm. Um, we sold our retail assets at that time. And then, um, uh, um, you know, pivoted into business to business. Um, 2012, my brother and I actually split the company um, in half um, and went our separate ways with the business. Um, and uh, at that point, I divested most of what were still some of our e-commerce properties. So we still kind of had this, this blended sort of business model. Um, and then I doubled down on, um, on managed services and managed security services, which is where we play today, <clears throat> primarily in the highly regulated industry space, um, mm. healthcare, finance, uh, professional services, stuff like that make up most of our, our client portfolio. <clears throat> so we're, um, uh, we're 25 years old, but really kind of have stripped the business back to its bare bones 11 years ago. Um, and started over almost from the beginning and rebuilt over the past 11 years. Um, today, you know, in the last two months, we've hit the 33rd fastest growing company in Utah um, on the Fast 50 and the 81st on the Mountain West uh, Capital Network, um, uh, Utah 100. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing some things right. We're learning a lot of lessons. Yeah. We're taking our lumps, you know, as well. That's part of business. Um, you know, business is always going to be a process of, uh, of learning. And usually that learning comes, uh, with challenges that you face, you know? Yeah, for sure. Can, we want to, we'll dig, want to dig into those, some of those challenges and learning. Yeah, well, so, I was going to say, can I ask about the split? Are you, can we talk about that or talk about, ask about what? Sorry? So the, the split, the split of the business. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, cause you, I mean, you, you, so at the time it sounds like you felt really confident in the direction that you felt the, the business should go. Right. And, I, I guess, yeah, what was the, what was the other direction and, and what made you feel so confident that like the split and doubling down on this opportunity was the right thing for you? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic question. Way to, way to kind of peel back the layers on that onion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, really, you know, my, my brother and I, um, we started up something great together, you know, um, had 14 years, you know, really good years together. We'd build a pretty good size, you know, business at that point. Um, you know, we were, uh, we were a mid seven figure business at that point. Um, and, and we, we'd bootstrapped from, you know, day one, we still are, you know, we're still a self-funded bootstrapped company 25 years later. You don't, nobody really invests in tech enabled services. So it's not like, you know, we don't go raise right, money, right. right. You just, you figure out how to get super scrappy and, and how to, how to build a business. Um, but, you know, going back to the question there, um, uh, you know, over time, really, we, we just kind of became misaligned in our vision. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my brother really wanted just kind of a more simple lifestyle business. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a growth oriented business. Um, you know, I had bigger visions of grandeur for what I wanted to build. Um, and, um, and so you know, it was just a natural choice. It wasn't even a, like a, a, a problem. We just sat down and we're like, you know, let's, why don't we, and we didn't quarrel. It was like, we literally sat down, here are the assets here's the client list. We split a 50, 50, we negotiated a few client accounts, you know, um, uh, we drew up a few contracts and you know, away we went. That's great. Um, 
and we're still brothers, you know, we still yeah. get along just fine. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't messy, um, you know, at all. Um, and, um, and so really for me, yeah, I, I just, I'd seen, um, kind of the future of where our business and our industry was going and what could be built and, uh, had visions for what I wanted to do with that. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, it was a great opportunity to, um, to begin to execute on that. Now I spent, you know, really 10 years as a solopreneur, um, mm -hmm. since, you know, from 2012 until last year mm -hmm. as, you know, sole shareholder of, of the organization. And that's challenging. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, um, not really having vested founders, you know, um, and that founder muscle and leadership, you know, uh, within the organization, um, it, at some point you stunt your growth and that's, you know, partially why I started to do some mergers and acquisitions and ultimately brought in a couple more shareholders into the, into the organization, um, you know, to, uh, to help propel the growth and bring some more, you know, some, some more workload and leadership muscle into the organization. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. Was there any, <clears throat> no, yeah, I, I, I probably won't follow up on that question actually, yeah. but, um, did you have something? Well, just, just, just to, uh, to our audience, um, just restate again the problem that you're now with this new business you've been building what is the problem you're actually solving and, yeah. and why is it so important for for, for the customer, your clients yeah absolutely so um we're probably a little different than a lot of the companies that you're you interview you know we're not SaaS. Uh, we're not a consumer product or something like that um, we are tech enabled services and more specifically managed security services and managed IT services. Um, and so really what it comes down to um, is there, there are several different variables and, and problems that emerge within our clients, you know, businesses that, that cause needs or pain for them. Um, and usually that's one, either they just want to focus on their core business and not have to deal with the technology behind the scenes that enables and runs that, nor do they want to have to deal with all of the complexity of the cybersecurity of that, the compliance, you know, um, um, compliance regulations are changing the landscape of, um, of requirements of cyber and compliance practices at breakneck speed in the market right now. And if, if that's not your business, like, um, it's just another, really messy thing to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when you're trying to, you know, focus on building some sort of product and taking it to market and growing that, you know? Um, and so, and, and then of course the threat landscape, like, um, businesses are getting hacked all yeah, the time and right, not just right. big businesses, you know, local small businesses, you know, a, a report was published a few years ago here in Utah stating that three out of five, um, you know, Utah businesses have been hacked. And, um, and, um, one out of those three doesn't know that they're actively hacked right now. Right. Mm. Um, and just, you know, you got, you got cases happening all the time. Last week I went to my local ACE hardware store, really just up the street from here, you know, to, to get some stuff and they had a hack a week ago, you know, and we're down. And it's so like they were mm. processing stuff manually a week mm. later. Um, well. you know, I, the same day I got a letter from my mortgage company saying, Hey, we're, we're hacked. You don't need to make a payment right now. You won't have any late fees. We're trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, th this kind of stuff's happening all the time. Um, and again, if it isn't your core focus as a business, um, it's a challenging problem to solve for yourself. Add on top of that right now in the cybersecurity realm, there's a shortage of 750,000 published cybersecurity professional positions in the US. Hmm. Um, there's not enough talent um, to keep up with the demand. And so even hiring internally to build hmm. cyber teams is a real challenge. So, and, and we're in a time of economic uncertainty, which tends to lead to businesses looking at uh, outsourcing rather yeah. than building in, yeah. in house. Um, so what, what pains do we solve? Um, technology that doesn't work technology that doesn't enable and empower your business, uh, you know, and empower your business and technology that, um, doesn't keep the data safe that is inherent right. to your business. Um, you know, um, for your employee data, your vendor data, your client data, all that kind of stuff. We, we, uh, we provide turnkey services with 25 years 
of refinement and practice and operations and automation and workflow and dashboarding and ticketing and all this stuff, right? We built, you know, very robust tech and cybersecurity stacks. And so we provide those on a, on a turnkey basis that we can plug into a business either on a fully outsourced basis or on an augmented basis. Cause a lot of our clients are, are medium sized enterprises. Yeah. Um, and they have some internal IT and or cyber team. Um, we, we just help augment their capabilities and or the numbers of people that, you know, that are helping them because they don't have enough. Yeah. So you protect the business. Yeah. Um, do it. Why, why the medium sized businesses? Is that just, um, they, they're in this in between stage. They're not quite ready to invest heavily. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, exactly. That's, that's very much so. Yeah. Um, you know, we started more in, in the SMB space, yeah. um, and we still have a lot of clients, you know, great clients in the SMB space. Over the past 10 years, we've, we've made a strategic, um, you know, investment, decision investment into um, migrating more and more into the SME space um, because, um, yes, there's still most of them, well, many of them still don't have internal teams, but they have bigger budgets to go after the problem, you know, um, yeah. in a, in a place where we can add more value. Yeah. Um, you know, in today's world with the reality of cyber threats, like if you're going to get real about being compliant and, uh, having good cyber practices, you have to dedicate real money to it. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it can be really hard for SMBs to actually carve out those kinds yeah. of budgets yeah. in SMEs and particularly highly, highly regulated, excuse me, highly regulated, where compliance and cyber practices are not a luxury. They're, they're mandatory by government you know, law. Um, you know, you have to do it. And so that's why we focus, you know, and, and we've developed very specific capabilities. Uh, and again, turnkey processes that we can plug into these businesses, um, you know, uh, to, to help them manage those compliance and cyber practices um, and, um, you know, solve that for them. So again, they keep their eye on the ball, you know, they focus on what they do best. They, they focus on their core and we take care of the technology and the security of that technology behind the scenes. We're accountable to them. You know, we, we provide them all sorts of reporting. We do, you know, monthly or, or quarterly technology business reviews with them, show them what we're doing. We align, you know, our technology plan and cyber plan to their strategic business plans. We help empower and enable those, you know, so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, you sold it to me, <laughs> but, and I probably should have asked, well, we're going to ask you some wrap up questions around advice around how do, how do you, you know, other people out there that are trying to create something that never, has never existed before, or they're trying to create a movement. I'm not sure. What, what do you think? The right no, right? yeah, right. I, it's interesting because um, this has been a, I'm probably going to go off on a tangent a little bit, right? <laughs> like this has been a, an interesting thing, you know, and what we've done so far yeah. today and over the course of uh, yesterday. It's interesting to see the things that stand out and the things that are different and the things that you know, are the same. Yeah. And I, I definitely think your story is one of longevity in a way that I don't know if we've necessarily heard, you yeah. know, and I think that that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and we're a 25 year startup, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. It. And boots yeah. and, and bootstrapped, uh, yeah. bootstrapped all the way, which is unusual. It's yeah. yeah I, and that again, too, exactly. you know, like, Sometimes I take the path of more resistance, but was it, was yeah, exactly it, it? straight back to the beginning. I love that. Yeah. But no, yeah. I mean, to, to the point of that question. So we do ask, you know, everybody that comes on on the podcast right now, what does it take to, uh, to, to, to take an idea and create, create something that's never existed before or, or to create a movement. And I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. Yeah. Really good question. Um, you know, uh, and certainly, you know, it, it requires some level of brilliance, but, um, you know, you've probably heard, and I, don't, I probably won't nail this, this uh, quote exactly, but, um, you know, ideas are a dime a dozen, you know, mm -hmm. the devil's in the details of execution or something to that, to that effect. And, that, and that's just it. Like, you know, I've heard a massive amount of brilliant ideas in the startup space, you know, um, over 25 years of my tenure, you know, in business. Um, and very few of those ever become something real. Um, you know, one, they may not have real product market fit. They, they may not really, maybe a fantastic idea, but nobody's willing to pay, you know, a price for it or a price that makes sense for the business yeah. that, you know, sustainable for a business model. Um, uh, 
or, or there's just not enough demand out there really, you know, for the mm. problem that's being solved to make it a scalable business. And so, um, and then the other, you know, the other piece of that is, is, you know, um, frankly, you know, a lot of people have really great ideas. Um, they either don't have the skills, the capability, the knowledge, or the real desire to go and build something, right? Yeah. Like building a business, can we drop F-bombs on this thing? Building a business is fucking hard, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, it, it's literally probably the hardest thing that you can do in life, you know? Mm. Um, okay, granted, all right, there's, there's people that are faced with, you know, some really difficult challenges, right? But, you know, you put it up there, it's in the top 20 hardest things you, yeah. could, you could do in life, you could choose to do in life, right? Um, it takes a massive amount of discipline and diligence and resilience mm -hmm. and stick to itiveness and never giving up, right? Um, and so certainly like you got, you got to go create a really cool idea and you got to think deeply about that idea. You got to think deeply about how you're solving a real problem for, you know, whatever market segment it is that you're, you're solving that for. You got to think deeply about, you know, are people really going to pay for that? Right. And then you got to go test that hypothesis well, and you got to do yeah. some market research, but yeah. then you got to go, you know, test that hypothesis and see if you can actually gain product, product market fit. Right. Um, if you can, and you can create a scalable model and you're willing to put forth the effort to execute, like, you know, you can build a business right out of an idea, out of a dream. Um, you know, again, some, uh, and I've had dear friends, you know, that awesome ideas, they look really great. Ultimately just not enough product market fit to, you know, to really create a scalable business out of it. Um, you know, a dear friend six months ago showed her to an awesome business, very deeply loved by the Utah business community, mm. um, that business. Um, and he is a founder, um, you know, but um, just couldn't quite get enough user adoption to make yeah. it make sense from a business model, right? And, and made the difficult decision to shutter the business. But it happens. Um, sucks. I've, I've yeah. shuttered multiple different businesses. I mean, we've had, you know, all sorts of different little side projects and, you know, e-commerce brands and these different things, you know, yeah. um, that are part of my entrepreneurial journey. And, and this is the one that really has, you know, been the, the biggest home run. Um, you know, I've had several that I've shut down a few that I've, you know, sold and exited and done a few things with, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, there's lots, lots of pieces of advice in there. Yeah. Can I, uh, so is, can we listen to your music? Oh yeah. Is that available on like Spotify? Yeah, uh, yeah we're we're a local um um you know kind of grunge punk 90s retro yeah. cover band. That's um, cool. Uh we don't have anything on Spotify and and honestly we don't keep the page up to up to uh, uh up to date lately but just go look for 90 Utah 90 proof 90 proof Utah. 90 proof I think Utah. on Facebook. Um, we, we got to get better at our social Something media stuff. Something about that name um, even sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, we've played, we play a lot of corporate events, like Silicon okay. Slopes events and stuff around. Oh, okay. So yeah. actually the whole band is made up of tech founders or oh, tech execs. Cool. Interesting. Um, wasn't by design. It was, it just happened. <laughs> we, we fell into place. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're all either CEOs of local tech companies or CIOs or CTOs. Um, and you know we just all came together so we we play some music and you know that's our sanity um we jam on wednesday nights um and we play some gigs around town that's and awesome. some corporate events and birthday parties and stuff i feel like yeah. we need some footage uh, i, I feel like some we need some footage there, there, it's out there well, and some uh, we should get you some more maybe, recent footage but i'll yeah, put it in the documentary. the documentary yeah yeah. yeah yeah all right we'll get you some more recent recent footage for the documentary yes. that'd be fun that would be amazing yeah, yeah. we'll put it in there's, there's probably some from uh so we opened the actually just out front here the silicon slope start fest um oh that's right a month a month ago yeah i was, yeah. I was oh i, I, got, I yeah. got there a little late for the after party afterwards but yeah but yeah you play you play set there. yeah yeah we, awesome. we played a hour and a half set or something you Fantastic. know uh, for that party yeah it's cool um yeah so what is next for you, by the way? Are you, is this another 25 years <laughs> of the same, you know, well, you know, that's, that's secret vision? sauce, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody uh, listens to this. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I've got another 25 years in me, you know, um, uh, but, um, but, but I've got some time in me and I'm yeah. not done building what I want to build yet. Yeah. Like I've still got, I've still got pretty big visions of grandeur. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we are, dominant in this market we're, mm. we're beginning to become more dominant in the regional market yeah. um, and that's you know um, 
that's really next is, is dominating our category regionally. Um, some of that's through organic growth. Some of it is through mm. strategic, you know, a growth through acquisition. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a really highly fragmented market nationwide. Um, uh, really, actually, if you carve it down to IT service providers nationwide, about 120,000 of us, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of three or 4,000 in Utah alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's, it's highly fragmented. There's a lot of opportunity to go, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, have some of your colleagues join you in the journey in other markets. Um, you know, uh, it's a hard business to build a really, really hard business to build. Even like some of my really good friends that started in our space and then sell and go build a SaaS company. They're like, I don't know how you're still doing that. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, that is, literally the hardest business I've ever tried to build, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of, a lot of MSP founders, you know, they, they, um, they have a hard time ever getting past one, 2 million in revenue. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they get to a point in their journey where they're ready to go join something bigger mm -hmm. or they're ready to step away. So there's a lot of consolidation in the space and, you know, a lot of acquisition activity and stuff like that. Before we get into the rest of the episode, we want to thank the partners and sponsors who made the Kiln Road Trip possible. The Kiln Road Trip is brought to you by Kiln. Kiln is a boutique co-working and flex office community with 13 locations in six states across the West, dedicated to providing innovative workspaces that empower your team to thrive. Whether you're a solo visionary or an enterprise level team of up to 100, Kiln transcends being merely a place to work. It's a hub for learning and connecting with like-minded professionals that will make you and your team love where you work. And if you haven't stepped foot inside a Kiln yet, you really need to. On this road trip, we visited every single location and trust us when we say, once you see these beautifully designed spaces, meet the talented team and connect with fellow members, you won't want to work anywhere else. Locations include Utah, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon, California, and Arizona. And they're growing too with multiple locations set to open in 2024. Yeah, so be sure to check out the Kiln locations nearest you by booking a tour at kiln.com and answer swell in the question, how did you hear about us? Once you complete the tour, you'll be entered into a competition where you could win a one-year membership, their club membership at Kiln. Yep, you heard that. That's kiln.com, book a tour, and be sure to mention Swell in the question, how did you hear about us? The Kiln Road Trip is also brought to you by Motera Campervans, a luxury campervan rental company for iconic road trips. Their top of the line vans are available at seven locations located near America's best outdoor adventure destinations. They have consistently earned the highest customer ratings in the industry, making Motera camper vans your gateway to adventure without sacrificing on comfort or service. That's true, and initially we wanted to take this journey in a 1960s VW bus, but thankfully we found Motera instead. With three van options, we took the Pop Top Classic, which sleeps four and is best for those who want to maximize floor space and, and storage. This was critical for us because it needed to sleep the entire crew, we needed space to edit, and we were traveling with large amounts of equipment, luggage, and you know other goodies that we picked up along the way. And this van took us through all 3,580 miles of the trip. Super comfortable and sweet to drive. And actually, Motera offers fully planned itineraries if you'd rather leave the planning to someone else. Visit gomotera.com forward slash swell. That's gomotera.com forward slash swell. This episode is also brought to you by Taurus. Taurus is leading the charge in home energy storage. Taurus makes it easy to achieve energy independence and a greener tomorrow. The Taurus station provides everything you need to generate clean power, efficiently store electricity, and easily manage your energy use. And installing a Taurus station offers plenty of benefits, including save money on your electricity bill, also ensure energy security with backup power during outages, reduce carbon emissions with renewables. You can also automate EV charging and HVAC systems with 100% renewables. And enjoy unrivaled system monitoring and support. If you like the sound of those benefits, get a quote to build your Taurus station in less than 30 seconds. Super easy at Taurus.co. That's T-O-R-U-S dot co. Now, let's get back to the episode. Well, it's certainly impressive that you... You, I mean, I'm going to make some assumptions. You're not doing it for the money necessarily. You you want to build something. I don't know where it comes from that, that you know, you you just have to build in, lean into the things. If you want to build something, 
the proof is in the pudding. You'll crack, you'll get on with it and you'll build it and you'll stay with it until you feel like you've done what you need to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a builder. Um, You're a builder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly the satisfaction of having a vision and, and, um, and a dream and bringing that to reality, you know, is, is something big, but it's also for me, um, you know, uh, creating a workplace where, you know, really like, the, the thing we focus on is a place that we create a place where people can do the best work of their career. Mm -hmm. Like we create an environment where they feel enabled, they feel empowered, they have a culture where they, they feel supported and, 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 you know, have great collaboration and communication with their teams. And therefore they, they can do the best work of their career, right? They can really get into a, a state of flow and, um, you know, be innovative and figure out how to, you know, um, take our business to the next level and solving yeah. problems and challenges for our clients, um, you know, and therefore enable our clients businesses to do better and be more successful. Um, and so that's, you know, um, creating a lot of value just for all stakeholders, right? For your employees, employees your clients, and you so know, responsibility you've got that you enjoying maximizing <clears throat> the, that impact for them, all of them. Totally. You know, yeah. of course, shareholders were, were part of that equation, yeah. but, for me, it's also also community. Um, mm -hmm. Like uh, we love supporting, you know, community events that are going on, mm -hmm. whether that's in the tech community or it's nonprofit stuff yeah. going on. Actually, the band plays. A, we donate our time to a lot of nonprofits so that we can bring that's out cool. a crowd and so, you know help sell some tickets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You great. know, um, and you know, Nexus. We we try to lean in um, as much as we can into the local community and support cool stuff going on. You know, good nonprofits um, and that kind of stuff. Um, because uh, we, we do feel like, you know, our success doesn't really mean a whole lot unless it has a much larger impact, right? Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, as a, as a founder of a, of a successful business at some point when you exit, you know, uh, there's some wealth there. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, if you can't create a whole lot of impact and wealth for a lot of other people and entities, then it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of The Kiln Road Trip. Be sure to follow along on the rest of the journey, and you can do that in two ways. One, subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or maybe even watching on YouTube. And follow along on all of our social media platforms, whether you're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok, at The Swell Pod. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.